Hello Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program students. In this screencast we're going to look at adding fractions using the rectangle model. And we're also going to use a smart board because as we learned in the previous screencast, the smart board gives us a way to model the addition of fractions in such a way that students will understand why when you add two fractions, for example, the denominator stays the same and you add the numerators. I'm going to give you three examples. One adding fractions with like denominators, one adding fractions with unlike denominators, and one adding mixed numbers together. And again, we're, we use the same model for each. And that model is the rectangle model on our smart board. You'll recall that on our smart board we had a rectangle that we can drag onto the board. So let's start by adding one eighth to three-eighths. Okay, as we learned in the last screencast, we need to divide our box into eighths. In fact, since I'm adding two fractions, maybe I should start with two rectangles, one for the one-eighth and one for the three-eighths. And let's see how we're going to do it. We need to divide the box into eighths, each box into eighths. So there are several ways to do this. We could begin by dividing into fourths, and then divide the fourths into eighths. That would work. And of course what we've done for one box we should do for the other. That is divide it first into halves, then into fourths, and then into eighths. Now to show the addition, once again I'm going to grab the pen tool that's called the creative pen. And this time I'm going to grab the smiley face tool. So if I want to indicate what one eighth is, all I do is to click and one smiley face in the eight parts represents one eighth. Over here I'll click on three boxes. So now I have three boxes colored in here and that represents three eighths. Well addition just means you take two quantities and you put them together. So let's put our quantities together. Let's grab this eighth and drag it over to here. Let's grab this eighth and drag it over to here. And this eighth and drag it over to here. So we can see that one eighth plus three eighths equals four little boxes. And remember each little box represents an eighth. So we can say that one eighth plus three eighths equals four eighths. But let's not stop there. Remember that in the last lesson we learned that fractions are sometimes equivalent to other fractions. You know, I can remove some of the bars that I have over here. I could remove this bar and this bar and now I've divided my original into four parts. Two were colored. The top two. So two-fourths would be an equivalent answer. But let me remove one more bar. How about if I remove that bar? Now I've got the original rectangle divided into two parts and the top part's colored. So we could say now that the colored part represents one-half. And sure enough, one-eighth plus three-eighths equals four-eighths and four-eighths equals one-half. So the answer to this problem is one half. Now let's try one that involves unlike denominators. I'm going to clear my board and remember the way to clear the board is simply to draw a box around all of your items and hit the delete key. This time let's couch the problem in a word problem. John has run two-fifths of a mile. He wants to run one-third more of a mile. How much in all will John have run if he runs two-fifths and then runs one-third of a mile? So our problem is, what is two-fifths plus one-third? Let's begin by dragging our rectangles, one that's going to be for the two-fifths and one for the one-third. Now we know that in order to divide a rectangle into fifths, we need to put up dividing lines. And you may remember that if you need it in the fish, you'll end up dragging four bars to the interior. After I drag mine, I'm going to scoot them over a little bit, make them equal size, so that I've got a good representation of what one-fifth would look like. 
That's not bad. And I would assume then that one-fifth would be one of the vertical bars here. There are five in all, so two-fifths would involve two of the vertical bars. And I'll color those in a minute. But let's go ahead and color our one-third as well. Let's divide this box into thirds. Notice that I'm going to use the dividing lines that go the other direction this time, horizontal. So when I color these, I'm going to color maybe the top bar for one-third, over here the two left bars for two-fifths, and we want to put these together. Well, in order to put them together, it would make sense for us to add equals to equals. It makes sense that what I should do is to also divide the left rectangle into thirds and the right rectangle into fifths. So let's do that before we start coloring. Let's put a dividing line here for the thirds. After all, we're going to be combining thirds and fifths. And let's put those four lines in here for our fifths. Remember that it takes four inside lines to make five regions. Again, I'm going to use the idea of the smiley face tool. So let's grab the smiley face tool. Let's color in two fifths on the left hand side. Remember we said that two fifths would represent two vertical bars over here. And then we wanted to add one-third, and we said that one-third represented the top row. So now I'm going to add two-fifths to one-third. Addition just means you take two quantities and put them together. So let's grab each of these smiley faces and move it over and see what we have. Let's put that smiley face there. Let's put this one here, this smiley face here, this smiley face here, and one here. Okay, now we can see our answer. And our answer is, is going to be 3, 6, 9, 10, 11 boxes. And each box represents a fifteenth. The answer is 11 fifteenths. Now at this point, I haven't shown students how we're going to do this paper and pencil style. I'm not multiplying two-fifths by three over three and one-third by five over five. I'm simply showing them that in order to add the two, we have to make sure that they both have equal size boxes. That's another way of saying we have to get common denominators. And so what we really did was we, we really added two-fifths, which was six-fifteenths, to one-third, which was five-fifteenths, and that's where the eleven-fifteenths came from. Also notice that this is good justification as to why you can't just add the numerators and denominators. The answer isn't three-eighths. There's no eighth divider here at all. The answer it has to do with fifteenths, because that's the size of the little boxes once we divided each box into the same number of boxes. So how many miles has John run? He's run 11 fifteenths of a mile. Not quite a full mile. You'll see he's got some empty boxes here. Not quite a full mile. But still, most of a mile, 11 fifteenths of a mile. Now we're going to try a mixed number example. Let's clear a board. In this example, we're going to think about eating oranges. Let's suppose that we've eaten 1 and 5 sixths of one orange and then we eat half of another orange. How much in all have we eaten? In other words, here's a problem we want to answer. What's one and five six plus one and a half? We'll begin by getting our rectangles. That represents a one. We'll be dividing this one into five six, and we'll be dividing this one into a half so we can add and combine. Let's start by looking for the five six. I need to divide my rectangle into six, and so I think I'll do it by first dividing into halves, then each side into thirds, Now I'll divide the other rectangle into halves, and I'll use the horizontal bar. We could get our smiley faces out now and start coloring, but let's think about what we're going to color. First of all, I need to color five-sixths of the first rectangle, so I'll be coloring five vertical bars. 
I only need to co color one half of the other one, so I'll color the top section. But before I do the coloring, let's note that we need to add equals to equals. So the half is a lot bigger than a 6. You can see that. So what if we simply divided this rectangle into twelfths by putting our horizontal line here. That makes twelfths. And let's divide the halves into twelfths. Now there's more than one way to illustrate this on the smart board, but I think the way I'll do it is to divide the left-hand rectangle into twelfths by putting a horizontal line here. And I'll divide the right-hand rectangle into twelfths by putting several vertical lines. By putting a vertical line there, and there, and there, here, and here. Now, again, there are other ways you could have done this. But what I want to do now is to color in. I'll get my smiley face tool again. Now, I could color the one any way I want to. I could just zigzag all around to indicate that this is one full item over here. To get the 5, 6, though, remember we said you need to have five vertical bars. So how about if I just put a smiley face there? That's one bar. There's a second vertical bar. There's a third. Here's a fourth. And here's a fifth. So that's five of the six vertical bars. Likewise, the half represented the top part of this rectangle. So I just put smiley faces across the top to indicate this is one half. Now we remember that addition means you take two quantities and you put them together. So let's put these together. How about if I grab a smiley face from here and move it over to here. I grab this smiley and now this one's full. So now we're looking at a whole. So we know the answer is larger than two because here's one, here's two. And maybe what I should do now is what if I drag this smiley down to here and this smiley down to here. At this point, we could read our answer. Our answer is 2 and 4 twelfths. But remember, we can also find equivalent fractions. So for example, what if I simply remove that middle bar? If I click on the middle bar, hit the delete key, maybe now we can see that the answer is 2 and 2 sixths. And that would be a correct answer. But we also could remove this bar, and this bar, and this bar. Notice now that my rectangle is divided into thirds, of which only one is colored. Only one of the thirds is colored. So another way we could answer this problem is to say it's two and one third. Okay, I hope you'll take the time to practice other examples using the smart board, the rectangle tool, and the horizontal and vertical dividers. I think you'll see that you can model addition of fractions and mixed numbers, like or unlike denominators, many ways using this model. And the good thing about the model is it will answer that question that students will be answering soon when you start doing these strictly by paper and pencil. Why is it that you have to get a common denominator? And you're going to say, well, remember when we used the rectangles? We always made sure we added like-sized boxes to each other. On the next screencast, we'll look at subtraction. And no surprise, it will be very similar to addition. See you then.